Wow, what do you know? It's time for the Pocket Knife Show. Hey, it's Mike on the mic again for another episode of the Pocket Knife Podcast. When I was much, much younger and more inexperienced as a pastor, I used to be super critical when visiting a church while on vacation. I'd listen to the sermon, not to gain wisdom or understanding, but to analyze everything. I imagined myself better than the one speaking God's word to the people sitting around me. I found fault with style, delivery, word choice, interpretation, passage choice, you name it, I was critical. Did you hear that sound? The one that sounded like a baby's rattle? That was the rocks in my head rolling around as I shake my head in shame. I was so arrogant. I thought myself hot stuff. Did I mention I was less than five years out of Bible college? I didn't have enough experience to legitimately critique anyone. I could barely write the two sermons required of me each week and do the other things expected of me by my congregation. It wasn't long before God called me on my prideful judging of his servants. I was on vacation once again, sitting in a straight-backed pew somewhere, staring at a blonde-haired man as he spoke words from a pulpit not unlike the one I stood behind each week. I had my mental tablet out, ready to note the man's faults and failures. God's Spirit spoke clearly into my soul. You're going to miss the truth I have for you today. Talk about a slap in the face. My nitpicking spirit was closing off my ears to God's truth, my heart to his promptings, my mind to his directives. I would never grow spiritually if I was always watching for slip-ups rather than for signposts. This is the way. Walk in it. Is every preacher I hear now a perfect orator? No, not one of those God's called to teach his word is even close to perfect. We all have tons to learn, areas in which we can grow, ways in which we can better speak the truth in love. But there is no person standing behind a pulpit or sitting on a stool speaking about the God revealed in the Bible who doesn't have something to offer to a man or a woman willing to tune in to what the Spirit is saying. When I'm in a church on a Sunday morning simply because I've got a Sunday off, I want to hear God speak. Because my attitude is more right than it used to be, I hear God far more clearly and far more often. When the service is over, if I'm afforded the opportunity, I mention to the preacher the specific thing God spoke to me. This is, I'm telling you, the single best way to bless someone who's just given a message. Let me read a few words from Hebrews 13. In verses 15 to 18, the writer gives instructions to believers, telling them how they should live and how they should treat those who lead their church. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly profess his name. And do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifices God is pleased. Have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority because they keep watch over you as those who must give an account. Do this so that their work will be a joy, not a burden, for that would be of no benefit to you. Pray for us. We are sure that we have a clear conscience and desire to live honorably in every way. Every pastor I know desires to live honorably in every way, just as this person did. Every pastor I know feels the weight of being accountable for the spiritual well-being of their congregation. Every pastor I know is keeping watch over their flock as best they can with God's help. Every pastor I know, and those whom I'll never meet, can experience joy when they hear you tell them how God's voice broke through your mental defenses and pointed you back in the right direction as they were faithfully preaching. Every pastor I know, and every pastor I don't know, needs prayer. One more thing. I still notice how a pastor has crafted his sermon when I'm listening. I still notice word choice and style and those things. I still notice how well the person before me is keeping me engaged. But I'm not judgmental in all this. Not at all. Not anymore. I'm listening for something from God. I'm learning what I can do better. I'm waiting on the Spirit for knowledge and understanding asking him what I need to learn, and wondering how I can encourage my fellow servant when he greets me afterward. 
it's the better way to visit churches, the better way to listen, the better way to learn and grow. Praise God, he confronted me nearly 30 years ago. Think of all I might have missed. Oh no, it's sad I know we've come to the end of the show. See you next time.